Good morning. It's middle of October. Our fall garden is in full swing. And let's go ahead and give you guys a tour. Let's see what's going on and see how the plants are growing for our fall season. Let's get started. All right, so I was given a cutting of cassava and I sucked the cutting in our raised bed. And as you can see, this cassava has absolutely taken over our raised bed. A lot of people don't know what cassava is. Cassava is a root crop. It'll have a nice big long root system. You can cut that up and it's a starch just like a potato and you can treat it almost just like a potato. A little bit more fiber into it. So we're probably gonna uh, chop those up and turn those into some type of a potato type chip or maybe even try to play around for a cassava type flower. But this will be the last year that we try to raise cassava in the raised bed garden cause it grows like crazy. Now we've cleared out everything from the summer. We've put in some spinach over here and I put in a little bit of lettuces. Nope, no lettuces in this garden, just spinach. And spinach is just starting to come up I got some bok choy that's self-seeded from our plant that we had here over the summer. I got a bed that is uh, right here. This will be for future lettuces. We don't have anything planted in it yet. For later on in the season, as our other lettuces mature, we can come back in here and put lettuce in. Some peppers coming over here. I got some cilantro that is seeded right there. Our peppers didn't do so good this year. I guess I just didn't uh, pay much attention to them and get them going like I normally do. Our peppers usually do really good, but this year was a flop on the peppers. We'll have to make some adjustments and uh, do better with our peppers next year. Nothing in this bed over here. We got this reserved for future plantings. Now, over here, we've got cabbage lopers these things are just horrible in the garden they will decimate any kind of coal plant we got purple cabbages we've got our um, hybrid type of broccolis i can't remember the the variety that we went with if it comes to me i'll tell you in a minute but these are also hybrid type purple cabbages I tried, I tried the heirloom varieties. They didn't seem to work for us. They didn't want to grow. They had little small purple heads of cabbage. And so we went with a hybrid this year and try to get some, some better looking, better looking cabbages out of it. These uh, cabbage lopers are tearing me up over here. There's three of them right there. I put some uh, BT on there and get, get those things under control. But um, we went with purple cabbage, broccoli, purple cabbage, broccoli. Gives it a real nice aesthetic look. Breaks it up. Planted our plants two foot apart. Give them plenty of room to grow. And this is the first year we've done broccoli and cabbage in the border beds. And they seem to be doing really well. We typically put them over in our little raised bed uh, systems. Now a lot of people that haven't been watching us don't know that I haven't planted Tabasco peppers in this garden from seed ever. We planted one plant when we first moved here and it has self-seeded every year somewhere since. Five years ago, we planted one plant and it has self-seeded ever since. Underneath our Tabasco peppers, we've got some rutabagas. I need to get in here and thin those out. They're coming up good. This bed over here, we have a row of mustard and a row of turnips and then a row of Japanese turnips that was given to me by a friend. They're looking good. I got to get in there and thin them out. Over here, we have a tactical gardening cat on the patrol for any kind of rodents. Good morning, turnip seed. We got delicata squash. I planted a late variety or a, a late planting of delicata. That's finishing up. I get, I get out here and harvest all of these, but I got some nice delicata on here. I planted the, I planted them late and I seemed to have avoided all the pest pressures 
I didn't have to deal with the, uh, the squash vine borer whenever I planted the late crop. So those have done good. Over here, uh, continued and we planted over 50 plants of broccoli. Michelle's now a vegetarian of sorts, and so we decided to uh, step up the amount of vegetables that we are we're growing, and we planted uh, 50 broccoli. So this should give us several heads a week for the remainder of the season. We'll uh, harvest it, put it in the freezer, and then divide it out of the bag as, as we decide to, to, to cook it. Now this raised bed, we've got carrots growing in one row here and then a row of uh, beets, and then some radishes growing right in there. I've planted some lettuce in here, and the lettuce is just starting to pop the ground. She wants my attention this morning. And uh, I think I'm gonna have to come back and replant the lettuce. Lettuce didn't come up very well in here. Now, we went to visit my friend Marty last week over at Shuckleberry Farms. And I got these really nice plants from them. I got a, an ice cream banana. And people don't know that this one tastes just like vanilla ice cream. So that's why it's called ice cream banana. This citrus tree here is gold nugget. Um, Bob, one of my real good friends, Bob, said, man, have you tried the gold nugget? I was like, no, I've never have. He said, go over to uh, Whole Market or Whole Foods and get their gold nugget. And I tried it and I was like, man, that's just, the, just a great taste in citrus. So I contacted Marty and he has hooked me up with two really nice trees. And then while I was there, we decided to get some more avocado. And so I've got um, Brogdon avocado, which isn't very cold hardy here. So we're going to, have to really protect Brogdon. And then over here, I have a, let me tell you about this one. This plant, every southern gardener that lives in like a zone eight needs this one. This is called a short cycle banana. Cocoa Po. This one little short banana should have bananas on it next year. It's 90 days from the time it blooms to the time you harvest banana. And I didn't know this, but Marty has told me that a normal banana tree, when it blooms, it takes 120 days to harvest the bananas off of it. And it takes 18 months for a banana tree to get up big enough to bloom. And so those are almost impossible to get a rack of bananas. We've got some on there. I don't think they're gonna make it just because we didn't have 128 days from the time it bloomed to the time uh, our, of our first uh, freeze. So I don't have high hopes for our bananas over there, but I got really high hopes for this one. I'm super excited. So if you're looking for a banana of any type, contact Marty at Shuckleberry Farms and uh, see if he can hook you up with whatever banana you're looking for. Now, um, if you're in the area where Marty is at, I think he's over at around Fountain, Florida area, stop by there and see what fruit trees he has. He has an abundance of fruit trees. He's got uh, lots of fruit tree packages where he will sell you a package. He'll come out, he'll plant your trees, he'll get your orchard established. He told me he tests the soil and uh, he really gets his, his trees established for you. And so he may work up a deal. I don't know what the deal is, but we're gonna go over, back over there and talk to Marty and we're gonna get him to push out uh, what he's doing over there. Now, a Fantastic and the Brogdon uh, avocado, they're both considered a self-pollinating variety, but one is a type A and one's a type B pollen. So whenever they cross pollinate, it really produces a, uh, a huge abundance of fruit if you can cross pollinate. And uh, those two are compatible. Now, looking back over there at the cat, right next to the cat is my onions. We're gonna get ready to start planting the onions out real soon. 
and we're gonna let the onions grow through the winter. I've got a tray of 50 over there and uh, we harvested so many onions last year, we don't need another 200 onions in the ground. So we're only gonna do 50 to help subsidize what we've already got in the freezer. Um, now the onions, two years ago, we planted onions in this bed over here and the, some of the onions didn't make very well. So we took those little small onions and just kind of threw them in the corner of the raised bed. Well, last year they came back, they produced nice size onions. And then since onions are a biennial, they bloomed. So last fall or this past summer, after they bloomed, I harvested the seeds and I have replanted those seeds into the tray. And I'm excited to see how those, um, those onions are gonna do here since they're kind of climatized to where we are. And I got really high hopes for how the onions are gonna tur turn out and perform for us. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this garden tour. No, it's not. We got other things to talk about. We've got a bed of cauliflower over here. Another hybrid variety called Twister. Right in the middle is a bok choy that's self-seeded out of our raised bed. And uh, man, that bok choy is looking great. And I got one over in that corner over there too. But um, the hybrid cauliflower is looking better than any of the cauliflower I've planted in the past. Another self-seeded Tabasco pepper is just absolutely loaded up. I'm gonna try fermenting some of those this year and making our own Tabasco type sauce. Over here, looks like in a couple of days I'm gonna be losing my tomatoes. But uh, we got Bella Rosa right down the bottom. That thing is looking good. Look at all the tomatoes I've got in there. I sure hate to know that I'm gonna lose these. We're supposed to have another two weeks before we get our first frost. And I may be able to throw a little sheet over these just to keep the frost off of them and harvest out some more, uh, some more uh, tomatoes. Over here I have Amelia. These are Bella Rosa. And then I have one more variety in here. But our fall tomatoes this year did better than our summer tomatoes. And I think every year from now on, I'm gonna plant at least a, a few fall harvesting tomatoes. We're past the stupid hot heat. We're, we're past all the bug pressures. I don't have any bugs or caterpillars on these. They're, they're looking great. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the tour. Thanks for following along. And uh, I guess we'll see you next time. Don't forget, keep growing, keep building and always keep adventuring. And together, we're Farmington Famous. See you next time.